So we are journeying towards understanding arrays of pointers. And before we head there, we have to kind of, again, make, so to speak, a mental model or come to terms with mental model um, that relates to pointers to pointers, right? So let me then go ahead and set up a scenario, which is, uh, okay, let's look at the code here first, uh, just so that I don't confuse myself. There are three levels, okay. Perfect. So I just wanted to check the code just so that I don't mess things up. All right. So we talked about, uh, you know, memory, which is flowing like so. Then uh, we are going to talk about integers. So integers are four byte long. So, you know, four byte long. And we again have an integer i, which is starting off like with some value. Ten is stored, and by somehow I mean, you know, um, uh, either you know ten is here or here, and everything else is zero, depending on uh, something called little or bit big endianness. So we ignore that right now, and just have a simple model of memory. Ten is stored across the four bytes, right? And then um, you know the address of i would be this address. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know have int pi and then initialize it to uh, ampersand of i which is address of i but P pi itself will live in the memory and as we saw in previous uh, video uh, it would be eight byte long just because this machine that we are using uh, has pointers which are eight bytes long right and so the pointer variable itself pi uh, will will be stored somewhere Right, will be stored somewhere and uh, it will store the address of i right so then it is essentially pointing to okay let me uh, undo this yeah so this will be pointing the code is call for another variable which is double asterisk PPI. Right. So what double asterisks mean here is PPI is a pointer to a pointer. Right. So what that really means is PPI is going to hold an address that points to another address, which points to an address uh, that has relevant information. And that will become um, what is a clear as we look at the visuals. So then we are asking for PPI as a variable, and this will also then spawn eight bytes, right? Again, from previous videos, pointers, size of pointer is eight bytes on this machine. Okay, but then we say PPI is a pointer to a pointer, right? So then we are saying it is pointing to a pointer and PI itself is a pointer. So if I do ampersand of PI, what we are saying is, hey, uh, pi is a pointer. Take the address of that pointer. So wherever pi is, let's say it's stored at x, y, z. So please store x, y, z, right? So the visualization now should be that ppi is pointing to pi and pi points to i. So this is the first asterisk and this is the second asterisk right a pointer to a pointer that's the idea of ppi uh, and the double asterisk here next to you know hammer the point home if we have three stars here and then i just name the name the variable pppi just because i can remember how many levels of point pointing there is here and then I can simply say address of PPI. What this then results in is somewhere there is memory, somewhere there is PPPI, and then, and obviously this is eight bytes on our machine. On some machine, like 32-bit machines, pointers might be 32-bit, right? So it's not always that the pointers are 64-bit wide or eight bytes wide. They can be, you know, depending on the machine, four byte wide or even 16 bits or two byte wide. But then we are saying 
you know ppi itself was at an address maybe pqrs so store pqrs here and then you know we are pointing to a pointer that points to another pointer which points to an integer so the way you read this is pppi is a pointer that points to a pointer which points to another pointer which points to an integer right so here we read it as pi is a pointer that points to integer right so one is gone here we say ppi is a pointer to a pointer which points to an int and here we say ppi is a pointer which points to an int sorry which points to a pointer which points to another pointer that points to an int that's the idea and let me then just go ahead and you know in code demonstrate this see the the point here was again i'm emphasizing this that this visualization is something that you should be able to create when you uh, see initializations of these nature now this is an overkill i have never seen triple uh, asterisk like three degree of pointing um not uh you know described like this at least uh, yes there can be like a void pointer being passed around another story but i have definitely seen these two like first one obviously but second one also right and um, the point of this was just to give you that visualization let me hide this now let's go to the code and let's uh, you know discuss there so this is the code as you can see i is 10 pi points to uh, i ppi points to pi and triple p i points to double p i what i'm printing here is address of i pi ppi and triple p i so let's first print that so this will give us the addresses uh, that each one of them are holding let's compile the code compiled all right so what we now have is uh, essentially a graph here so um i'll just note maybe uh, the last two digits which is so cc is where um i is then uh, p i is somewhere we don't know where it is but p i is holding c c because we are printing p i right and then uh, p p i is somewhere and p p i is storing d0 and my claim is d0 is or this is the address uh, of p i and d0 yeah and then again somewhere for uh, eight bytes long of course uh, which is ppi a uh, triple pi and the triple pi is holding d8 uh, dot, dot, like d8 this entire value by the way it's not just holding d8 it's holding the entire value i'm just describing it as d8 and d8 happens to be ppi address and to prove this point now right uh, to prove this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this and let me just paste this and what we are going to now do is print um hmm. uh so yes i can print the address of pi and address of ppi and what we'll now see is uh of course the numbers will change now let me compile and uh, numbers have changed but something interesting will be seen here um yeah d has become b and so on let me clear this let's let's um analyze this so these two match so address of i is the content of p uh, is the content of p i right so somewhere there is i its address was ac last two bit uh, last two bytes or last one byte sorry and uh, this was contained within pi and then we said that the address of pi would be this b0 
right? And we set this because this variable is okay. Just a moment. Yeah, this variable is pointing to pi, so b zero and e zero, and this was ppi. And notice here we have the address of pi, right? So address of pi here matches with so ppi and the address of pi matches which tells us that this is true right and this of course we have now seen in n number of ways that this is true uh, pi pointing to i then the third thing was there was somewhere pppi which was supposed to point to ppi right so ppi's address we predict would be b8 so it should have b8 and then uh, if you know we take a take a look at let me just erase all of this yeah now if we take a look at the content here and the content here then they are same and this is address of ppi as per this right and we are printing contents of ppi here triple pi here and triple pi here and they happen to be same right so hopefully this then convinces you that we you can have a you can have a pointer that points to another pointer which points to another pointer and you can have like n number of uh, levels of pointers if you would want i just you know wanted to convey a point and hence had three levels but you can have n the question is where is all of this useful and i'm going to leave you with a potential example which is um, you can think of a file system right so you can you can have like a table of nodes but well having the nodes there itself doesn't make sense so you have like pointers to node and then at the end of the node you can point to something else and so on and so forth and you can even have within the nodes multiple pointers that point to other pointers and so on and so forth uh, you know with with your data residing let's say at the end somewhere in some memory block and so you have to read this pointer to go to this node and then read some pointer here to go to this node okay this pointer to go to this node and then read some other pointer to finally go to your data so that can happen this is how systems programming uh, you know uh, happens to be sometimes there are n number of you know pointer resolutions or uh, pointers that point to n number of things essentially at n level and so that's the example i want you to think on 